Hello everyone, my name is Daniel, and I'm just a casual sim racer, and I would like to introduce to you the 1967 Can-Am Complete Mod Collection and Custom Championship. And so I'm going to be driving a quick little race here, do some qualifying, and then jump into the race with the new car mod collection that I've got here for you, replicating the 1967 Can-Am Championship. Before I have released the 1966 Can-Am Complete Mod Collection and Championship, and now I'm doing the 1967 year over a year later. But hey, better late than never is that. I guess that's the way to look at it. Anyways, uh, just one thing I wanted to point out real quick here. You'll see some of this artifacts, black artifacts. That's nothing to do with the mod. That just has to do with the track. I don't know if it has something to do with Content Manager. Some of the updates sometimes affect some of the track, you know, in terms of specular things or stuff like that. So we'll see how that's going to, I don't know. Some of you may have that issue. Some of you may not. I don't know. It's not something on my end that I can control. So jumping into some qualifying here, I'm driving the the Lola Chevy and so this is the Lola powered by the Chevrolet motor it's a big block Chevy engine this is a Lola T70 Mark II and so it's just a really great car I love this car whether it's the Chevy or the Ford version there's two versions that come within the mod pack you will find within the and I'm off the track I've gotten too much into describing what's going on link that I've linked below that will take you to a web page I've created on that web page, you're going to see all the download links for all the cars, all the tracks. You're going to download those. The custom championship is the last thing. You'll download that. I have a short one minute installation tutorial video linked within the installation guide on that web page. Click on that video, watch it if you don't know how to install a custom championship. It'll show you how to do that. I made that a while ago, so that should help you all out if you have any questions. And that includes, the custom championship includes the AI for the drivers, it includes the cars, the tracks, the season, I've modeled the weather accurately based on the weather conditions, I did some research for every single event, so it's got accurate weather conditions, it has the accurate length, I have a 5% championship, where all the races are 5% of the actual distance, 10% of the actual distance, and a third variant that has 25% of the distance. So that is three different options for you there. And then of course, if you go under, when you're in Content Manager, if you go under the content, and then you go under, I believe it's other, and then you can go under the custom championship, you can go in there and you can modify the things. If you don't like how I did the AI, you can tweak things. Such as if you don't like the starting car, or you want to change, I guess, a track out, substitute a new track. Whatever you want to do, you can mess with those files. I do want to give one word of warning though. When you mess with the AI files, they often don't save correctly. You often have to edit that manually. That's one of the things I have to do. And actually, I create the, the championship files from scratch. I just code it. I'm kind of used to doing all that within a set of course with the mods I make and stuff. So I just code it within the championship files. It's easier. There's some glitches that often pop up within Content Manager and the custom championships. So just tape, keep that in note if you start having some issues with stuff not saving exactly right, especially in regard to the AI. All right, we're gonna come around here and we're gonna do our best to set a really good lap. So we can head into a flying lap right there. We're already purple. So that was a purple lap there. That'll put us at the top of the leaderboard. Let's see if we can do a little bit better. If we got time for, no, this is at least, you got time for this lap here. So we'll see what we can put down in the next minute three quarters or so it takes to lap the Stardust International Circuit. There's Mario Andretti ahead of us in his GTX1 that I have him in. He was in a Ford-powered unique kind of Can-Am car and this was kind of something that I could find that was close and so definitely a very interesting car to add out here and add some unique dynamics, especially at like Laguna Seca during the championship where it's more flat out. He will definitely be a contender for points during that race. Top six during the 1967 Can-Am Championship received points, kind of like Formula One racing at the time. They expanded the points later on, but not for the first couple of seasons. So anyways, we're going to try and pass Mario here on the outside. 
hopefully doesn't mess up my hot lap here too while he's passing me back. See that big engine of his. It's a beastie, it's a beastie thing. And he's also a little more streamlined than maybe some of the other Can-Am mods would be. Alrighty, let's see if we... Nah, I'm not sure we got now. I think this lap isn't going to be as fast as our last one. It's just my hunch because of running into Mario here, having to fight through this. Alrighty, and so that's going to be qualifying. Let's see what we got. We were at third after some of the cars nipped us after our hot lap. Definitely we got Denny Holm on the pole. We got Jim Hall in second in the Chaparral. And so Denny Holm is driving the, we have the M6B GT. In real life it was an M6A. It was more of an open top Can-Am, but for him and for as you can see, Bruce McLaren is now in third. They are both driving the closest thing I could find. So th definitely that, that car is on my radar to create through Casual Sim Studios. But for now, let's just jump into this race. So starting fourth, we'll see if we can work our way up through the field. Well, not up through the field, but work our way up past these leaders. Not the greatest start here. We might have to work our way up through the field if we have such a bad start. <laughs> Got some Lolas here on our left. Uh, cutting us off. I think that's Mark Donahue there. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That was a... Oh, that was George. Mark Donahue is on our left, and we will get past Mark Donahue before we head into the S's. And these S's are brutal at Stardust, at least within the mod. Um, often the drivers will get a little bit off, hit one of those tires, and they're unforgiving. And that'll end their race, which isn't a terrible thing because the retirement rate was high back in this era, so having some retirements at a couple tracks isn't necessarily a bad thing, but this is definitely a track where a car can end up doing some barrel rolls and, you know, what possibly could have been a tragic or even fatal crash, you know. But thankfully, within sim racing, we don't have to worry about any of that. So we're back up into fourth, back where I started, and so yeah, I just love driving this thing. It's just a blast. Sending it through the corners. This mod's so much fun. I've this is my. I've done two back-to-back -back championships, making this 10% um, disc length and 5% length. I don't typically do 25% length races. That's a long time, but the options there for any of you that would enjoy that. Alrighty, here. I think I'm gonna have the pace on Jim Hall. I don't know if I've got anything for the two leaders up there. Bruce McLaren and Denny Holm, they are fast. I mean, the cars are fast, but then their AI is solid. The only, the best AI is the AI for the one Lola, the defending champion. The name slips me at this second, but um, he's the best AI. He's a 91 in AI strength and a 90 in aggression. Uh, Mario Andretti is also one of the best. He is a 90 in AI, 100 in aggression, but his car isn't that great. Um, which is pretty realistic, to be honest. And then we got Bruce McLaren, who was the champion this season. He is a 90 AI, 90 aggression. Denny Holm is 90 AI, 85 aggression. Or I guess pace. I don't know why I keep saying I, but pace and then aggression. Alrighty, so trying to make a move here. That tight corner, it is a... When you first start driving this track, Stardust, it can catch you out some, but we're able to use the momentum out of the corner, get past Jim Hall here, cover him off, and we've got the position up into third. We cannot let these McLarens pull away from us. If they do, there won't be a chance for us to catch back up. So we'll see how we got get on here. We got five laps. I did do this, uh, you know, say a medium length race for myself. So we will see how we do here. Definitely, definitely closing on Denny Holm. The question will be to get past him. Oof. Oh, he braked a bit earlier than I thought I cared a little more speed there. All right, well, he's fine. Just a little fender nudge there. Said, of course, we don't have to worry about any crumpled fenders. Fenders cutting our tires, so that's good. All right, so he's pulled away. The problem, what I was about to say is, the problem with these McLarens, the McLarens M6 GTs, are that their straight line speed is really impressive, especially their acceleration. 
And so when I try to, you know, pass, like on a straightaway or coming down to a corner, even if I get a better run out of the corner, they can often just, the raw horse part of the car can still just pull away from me. So it's definitely one of those things where it can be really challenging to get a pass. And this circuit isn't the easiest circuit to pass on. I'll be straight up honest. It's one of the harder circuits to pass on. There's, this one's hard because the tightening corner, you can get a really good run on this corner sometimes, but like I said, they got a lot of high speed. Jim Hall, like same thing. He's gotten a run here on me. Got right up on my bumper, but then he doesn't have as much speed as I do coming out of the corner. He's got all the downforce, all the cornering, but he just can't get the run. And it's hard to pass if you don't have that straight line speed or at least the acceleration on the corner. Alright, we're hanging right here on the bumper here of Denny. Don't... Nah, see, he's pulling away. I'm, even in the slipstream, he's pulling away on me. Oh, he locked the brakes. He locked the brakes. Ah, it's just, it's just not there. Like, I just have to brake, and I, it, he is braking at least as far as I am, even after locking them. So he's just got a little bit better brakes too. All right, but we get past him there. We definitely, so we were able to carry that momentum. He still didn't look super like he was putting the corners together great. All right, we now have two laps here, two laps to go to catch up to. Bruce, and then to pass Bruce. See if we can pass the champ here, the 1967 Can-Am champ. See if we can catch him in the Ford, or excuse me, the Lola T70 Mark II powered by the Chevrolet engine. See if we can catch him here. Through the S's, oh, oh, we're definitely, he was taking it careful there, and I think he's trying to conserve that lead. That's giving us a chance. We're already caught him. I mean, I'm not sure we'll be able to pull a move in this lap. Oh, early braking hard. We are got to run around the outside. <sighs> he, he got a better, probably a better run out of the corner, and then his acceleration is going to pull him away from us. But here we go. Braking ahead of us. We can do some clean corners here. I don't think I'm going to look for the move on this lap unless it's handed to me. Main thing is I'm going to look to get right on his bumper by that section next time around. Yeah, we don't have anything on this lap, I don't think. Breaking, oh, diving up, nasty. Yeah, it's fine, fine, we're fine. Gonna have a corner, we're right on it. All right, we're gonna break early and try to get a run, carry some speed out. All right, here we go. One thing that a soda course have been nice if they modeled dirty air because that's one thing that isn't modeled and it's definitely something that in a couple of those corners right there, the speeds and the way the cars are handled, like definitely would have been some grip issues due to the dirty air coming off the bruise up there. But, you know, it's just one of the limitations of a soda course. Huh? I mean, the game's from 2014 and based on an engine from early 2000, so I think it's doing just fine. All right, we're right on the bumper now. All right, coming off the edge, coming off, uh, touch the ground. Hell, I mean, we wouldn't be able to make a move in the S anyway, so it's fine, it's fine. We'll just carry the speed, see if he takes it cautious. Okay, he's carrying more speed this time. Definitely carrying more speed. We are going to follow the best we can. All right, he's braking. We're gonna, I would like to have been closer because I feel like I don't, yeah, yeah, there's nothing here for me. Can't work a crossover, it's just, Right, we're gonna have to work a move into one of the final corners coming up here. Definitely didn't want to push it this far, but I feel like I actually have the pace. Don't always say that. Not all the tracks do I have the pace. Definitely, that's one thing too in the championship. Oh, right on the bumper, we got the speed. Oh, I think we got something. I think we got something here. Uh, we're past. Ah, uh, he passed us back. He's got more. Uh, he's using that horse power. Uh, I thought I had him. Mm, maybe on the brakes. Maybe on the brakes. Be careful, though. All right, give him plenty of room. I think he ran wide. Even though I gave him plenty of room. He hits the tire. He's, that's going to be it. We've got it. He just could not hang that line around the outside, and he drifted and just barely clipped that tire. That's going to give us the lead. But no, the one thing I was going to say is that when you're um, the tracks, the AI is quite different. So some of the tracks, like Bridgehampton, it's going to be killer. You will rarely win there, if ever, or even get points. But like Laguna Seca, Stardust is another one that's pretty easy. Those are tracks you're going to get points. And you just kind of balance the AI the best I can 
to make it challenging for the season. So if you're doing the individual race, then for sure you can change that up a bit. So anyways, that was the race. We were able to take the lead. I take the win. Definitely a bit of surprise. I wasn't expecting to win this race, but it's pretty cool. I don't normally win on stream for you guys or on video for you guys. So that's kind of fun. Uh, followed by Bruce McLaren, Denny Holm, Jim Hall. And so that was a really good race. Definitely the four of us were the class of the field today. Check out this mod. It's really fun. I've been putting it together here and there. And when the Chinook Mark II came out, it definitely felt like the final piece. And I dove back in and finished it up. And I wanted to get this out for you all. I also want to let you know, too, that um, my game development company, Casual Sim Studios, has a new Patreon page. And you can actually get early access to models. We'll be developing a lot of models for free release eventually. Still have some paid packs at some point, but free release. And you can get early access to those mods while we are developing them. So we have the 1934 Mercedes W25 available. We have the 1906 Renault AK GP car. That's available for early access. And if you'd like to support us, we've got a lot of different support levels for all the way from $2 all the way up. And so definitely check that out. I just want to thank you so much for those of you who are subscribed and helped support this channel and support the things that I'm doing in sim racing. I hope to see you in the next video. But most of all, I hope you have a great rest of your week.